Hey guys, I'm Aaron Edgar with Drums Etc. Magazine. Now, today we're going to take another look at reading music. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about rests. Now, if you paid attention in the last lesson, we talked about quarter notes, eighth notes, and sixteenth notes. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at their equivalent rests. Now, a rest is essentially a note that we don't play. It's designed to give space within music or silence. Now, the first thing that we have to do is identify what do these look like. The first one we're going to take a look at is the quarter note rest. Now, the quarter note rest looks a little strange, as you can see over here. What it looks like is kind of like a little lightning bolt or a weird sideways mustache, which is why I like to call them little hipster notes. So, now that we've seen what the quarter note rest looks like, let's hear it. In this first example, we have beats three and four are quarter note rests. So we're not going to play for those. We're going to play on beat one, B2, and then nothing on three or four. Let's hear it. Nothing to it, right? So the next thing we're going to look at is the eighth note rest. Now, an eighth note rest essentially has the same kind of principle as an eighth note. Now, remember with eighth notes and sixteenth notes, they had a stem with a little flag across the top, right? Same thing goes for the rests. If you take a look at the eighth note rest here, it's got a ball, and then it's got almost a little bit of a flag that goes into a stem. Now, that's an eighth note rest. For a sixteenth rest, we would have two of those little beads on there. So, if you take a look at example two, we have four eighth notes and four eighth note rests. Now, ordinarily, we wouldn't really write it like this. We would have it as either quarter notes or a half note rest, but just for the sake of argument to show you guys what eighth note rests do, I've written it like this. Let's hear what it sounds like. We have one and two and we're playing, then three and four and we're not. Last but certainly not least, we have sixteenth note rests. Now, based on the same principles as the eighth rest, we already talked about what it's going to look like. That's the guy right there. We have the last half of the bar being all 16th note rests. Again, this isn't how we would normally write, you know, two quarter notes worth of nothing, but to give you the idea of what they look like and so you can really see it, we've written it this way. Let's hear example number three. By now, I'm sure you have a really good idea of how this all works. So let's take a bar and we're going to incorporate two of the rests that we already talked about, the 16th note rest and the 8th note rest into a single example. First, we're going to play it on the snare drum at three different tempos, 60, 80, and 100 BPM. up being a pretty cool rhythm. So we don't want to just leave it there. What we're going to do for the last example of this lesson is apply it to the drum set. Now one thing you'll notice is that for the floor tom note I've used two different floor toms because on the kit that I'm playing this with I have two so I'm just picking each one depending on where I want to put it. You can put the floor tom note just on one floor tom, two different drums, doesn't matter. Let's hear what this sounds like. We're going to use the same tempos and then I'm going to play us out with this used as a drum fill.
gave you a better understanding of rests. I'm Aaron Edgar, the editor-in-chief of Drones and Catcher Magazine, and I will see you guys all.